We're live. So now you can just be typing as much as you want, and everybody will see you. Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going to see you no matter what you do, but they don't know what, they don't know well, what you're typing. I just felt bad for making clickety-clacky sounds. It didn't... So, that's fucking stupid. Because it didn't put the link... Da, da, da. Everything well, is stupid. I can see us. Um. All right, I'm redoing it. There we go. I'm doing it again, but this time with the link in it. Ha 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 ha! <laughs> um. All right, so here we are, and now I'll I'll cut this part out when I put it on the. The, what do you call it? But uh, on the YouTube's. Yeah, up on the on the YouTube, we we don't need to have this farting around part at the beginning. But I will say um, that um, welcome everybody to Castle Rock Historical Society live. Um, I'm here with Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Hey, hey. Um, we are going to do something that we don't usually do, but we talk about doing a lot. Um, we are going to rank American Dad episodes. And if you don't like his Mer American Dad at all, this may not be the show for you. But you might want to give it a try because we could convert you. And it is, in my humble opinion, way better and funnier than Family Guy, another of McFarlane's animated properties. Yep. Agree. Yeah. So. So take that. Uh, a thing that people may not know or but may have guessed if they listen to our show enough is that uh, the two, like, pillars of Acadia and I's friendship are, like, horror stuff. And relentlessly quoting American Dad in each other's presence, much yep. to the chagrin of our spouses yes. who don't like the show probably as much as we do. Not as much, no. But that would be, it, that would be difficult on on a good yeah. day. Uh, the other thing that binds us is uh, the person we killed at that convention that time. But you'd have to <laughs> join the Patreon to hear that story. Yeah, we don't talk about that one on no. on public lives. No, so. no, no. We can't be incriminating yeah. ourselves. As a matter of fact, I've already said too much, and I'm shutting this all down. The mask is finally so coming in handy. So, you who are familiar with American Dad, I know we're talking about the spookiest episodes of all time. Here is a quick disclaimer. We're not including the Christmas episodes, spooky though they are. We are saving them for another time because they are, like, their own separate thing. And also, it just added, like, way too much into the mix for yep. too much talking. Yep. So. Here we go. And other quick thing. I am wearing my Boys 12 shirt, which is very important. Oh, that's outstanding. <laughs> of our American Dad uh, live show. So, that yeah. makes me super Boys happy. 12. That's a that is a song that Jason and I listen to in the car, uh, unironically, somewhat frequently. Well, I listen to Daddy's the Gone. The one single. Today. We're not going home. There's a lot of good music in uh, America. Well, good is subjective, but fun music for sure. We'll, well get to talk about some of it, actually, because a couple of these episodes have musical numbers in yeah. them. One in particular has a lot of musical numbers in them, so that'll be fun. Plus, that dude uh, really likes singing, so. Yeah, was Seth plays... McFarlane like a music major or something? No, I mean, I, like well... He wanted to be a Broadway guy. Yeah, he definitely is, a, like, a show tunes fellow. But I was... I meant Scott Grimes in that instance, because he's got a good voice. Oh, he was in a boy band, wasn't he? I don't know. Yeah, I think he was, like, legit in a boy band. He has a beautiful voice. Well, that's fun. Um, he's also just, like, a little red-headed dish of a man. So yes, he is. that's also fun for me. Son of a whore! Sometimes he plays a character that is animated exactly like his actual self. 
in the background of shows, which is always fun. <laughs> so, I guess the best way to do this, so you, you see how I have the, the rankings, we're going to have to start in the lower right and make our way over to the top left. Which might not be, you know, okay. super... Okay, can, can we move them around if we need to? Yes, 100%. Okay, yeah. So, we put the episodes in chronological order, starting from, like, oldest to newest, I think. But then we discovered when we were, like, setting all this up that we had the DVD season numbers, which don't match up with any screening ser streaming services. So... Yeah. You know, you'll just have to find them by title if you want to watch them, I guess. But we will probably give a couple sentence summation of what all of them are. Because we have these things memorized. Because <laughs> we've watched true. the show so many times. Very all right, true. I'm ready. So let's do you want to start days. with um, Escape from Pearl Bailey? Yep. All right. Which should be an obvious reference to some. Yeah. But not all. Not at all. Is this like a riff on Escape from New York, right? Well, so it's an it's it's a lot of people say Escape from New York, and they did have to go through. I mean, Snake Plissken did have to go through a bunch of stuff to get out of New York. By the way, out of John Carpenter's movies, after the original Halloween, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is the thing, and they kind of go back and forth. But mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Escape from New York. Bar none. Love that movie. Couldn't love it more. I, I love the fact that the World Trade Center is a really important part of it. Um, and, oh, just, just outstanding. Really, really, really You know, I'm not really sure if I've, if I have watched Escape from New York. It was so long ago that I oh. don't really remember a ton oh. of it. So maybe I should look into that. I would love to do, like, one of those watch-along things. You know, like you do. The, yeah, that they have be, those on like all. I bet you could because they have those on all the streaming services. You can, yeah, you can so. do it on uh, a bunch of them now. Yeah, that would be that would be really neat. So, um, the the so, other the other movie yeah. that it 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 patterns itself after is uh, the Warriors, which is a much less famous but big cult hit from the late seventies about gangs in New York and this gang called the Warriors who are all and in the 70s everybody always looked wet they were always everybody was sweaty Ew. all the time well it's true and uh well I hate it this particular sweaty gang wore uh, no shirts and flimsy leather vests and uh, they had to fight their way from Coney Island all the way back to the Bronx because they had been uh, framed by somebody for killing the guy that was apparently going to unite all the gangs and take over the city. I don't know. Why does anyone want to get back to either of those places? Well, yeah, well whatever. You've got to be where you're from. Anyway, the, the, the second half of the episode, and it, I mean, it really is two different episodes. They did the A and the B story. They just did the, instead of swapping back and forth, they just did a whole A story. It was which, like the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they even they even referred to it when the family was in the house. Oh, nice of them to you know include us this week. Uh, Give us a line. Yeah, and uh, the second half where they're they're actually going through the school trying to get out, and Principal Lewis is narrating it over the PA. That's the uh, the part of the Warriors where there was a radio DJ that was explaining to everybody in gang code. Because apparently all the gangs listen to this one radio station, um, right. WGNG, and uh, it was Lynn Thigpen who was the chief on Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. I'm sure that she is better known for other things, but I will forever know her as the chief. And uh, so it was a, I mean, it was a very campy movie. You, you've probably heard Warriors Come and Play. That was a really creepy thing that one of the gangs was saying to the Warriors. Well, they're they were clinking the bottles. Yeah, they're clinking the bottles. They had the... Coke bottles on their fingers and they were clinking them together. Yeah. And... That's been riffed on, like, a lot. Yes. A lot, a lot. But the... So, the... Even in American Dad in multiple episodes. So clearly, the writers have seen that movie yes. a couple of times. The spookiest gang was the guys that were... They were wearing New York Yankees pinstripes 
but mm. they had completely like pan- white clown pancake makeup on. So they kind of looked like Yankee ghosts, and they all had baseball bats, of course, and they didn't talk. Yeah. So Ooh. yeah, they were they were creepy. I don't. I don't like that. Yeah. It sounds creepy. But now you see why we've included this episode in the list. Although, like, admittedly, when I was putting this together, this was my most, like, tenuous one of, like, do we include it? But yeah. it brought us out to a nice, like, multiple of five. So, yes. anyway. And, and in America Dad episode, instead of the gangs of New York, so to speak, you have, like, the clicks, which yeah. was funny. Like, the goths and the jocks yeah. and, like, the AV club, maybe? The AV club... Um, the, the stoners. Yeah, the theater kids, all of it. Yeah. Yeah, they had a lot. And uh, they also, I mean, that wasn't, those weren't the only movies that they, they riffed on. Um, no. The, the Let's Get Nuts was, of course, Batman from 1989. Um, two poop jokes. Two, like, big poop jokes. Now, this was fairly <laughs> early in the show's run, but... Yeah. Like, it was a big part of it. And, uh... They, they said that Principal Lewis, that one of that girl was Principal Lewis's daughter. That was never brought up again. They also referenced Lord of the Rings, the whole you shall not pass thing. And then the ending, mm-hmm. which you may not know, because I don't think you probably like Western movies that much. The very end when they jump no. out the back of the bus mimicked the ending mm-hmm. of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid when Robert Redford oh. and Paul Newman are cornered and they know they're going to die and whatever like that. And they just come out blasting and the screen freezes just like it did in the show. So this is a great segue to like, what is your favorite line of the show? Cause I just remembered Steve jumping out the back of the bus. Like we're not taking any of us, any of them with us. Yes, exactly. That was... <laughs> Cause they are not winning the fight yeah. against the jocks. Not, not Cause they're trying least. to get to Steve's mom's van to go home from school, but yeah. uh, healthy snacks, but snacks. Good, but... Um, not, yeah. Not good snacks. Healthy snacks. What's my, uh, favorite i you know this is from the earlier seasons which are like a little i think american dad hits its sweet spot kind of in the middle like maybe between season eight and season 12 are probably a lot of my favorites but this is like season five or six maybe four depending on how you number it so this isn't like my top favorite but there are a couple good ones that i did like debbie back when she was like on the show more she has some funny one-liners lizzie kaplan Yes. Annie Wilkes Who's in a herself. new animated show Good. that um, is by the guy who did Gravity Falls. It's actually kind of funny. Nice. It's called Inside Job. You should watch it. The, uh, I think my favorite line, and it's not really, I mean, it's not, it's not a joke so much, but in the, in the beginning when they're, when they're, when they're getting in trouble and Barry just keeps going, I'm Barry. <laughs> <laughs> I talk about people clothes a lot because of that, like, mean blog they started about Debbie. You just can't even wear people clothes. That slam page. Yeah. Which I didn't even know that Um, was a thing. So this one's, like, in the lower tier for me. I I am happy to put this one on the bottom and let it sit there for now. Yeah, I think so, too. All right. The show was still finding its stride. They really leaned into, like, the weird, spooky stuff as the seasons progressed and kind of became, I think, known for, like, bizarre, off-the-wall nonsense. Yeah. So this was kind of still when it was like American family with, you know, unconventional father job Yeah. with an alien. Also, there was not enough Roger in this episode. If it's yeah. a low Roger episode, I'm not really on board. So, yeah, I this is going to be that. 15 for me for now. Yeah, we agree. Yeah. All right. That brings us to <laughs> Phantom of the Telethon, which we couldn't stop quoting while we were getting ready Riffing. for the show. Like, yeah, just now. So that should tell you how we feel about that. This is a good one. Um, the premise being that, like, the CIA needs to raise funds to be able to torture people. So they have, like, a telethon. It's pretty stupid. <laughs> um, but it's a very funny premise. And um, there's a lot of there's a lot of really good one liners here. But Roger becomes the Phantom of the Opera. Basically, he's the Phantom yes. of the Telethon, and causes all sorts of shenanigans and scary things to happen. It's great. It's because very funny. Stan funny. refuses to acknowledge that it was his idea to have the Telethon. Right. Stan is not good with the ideas uh, coming up with. <laughs> I'm sure I invented that machine. That was a hat. <laughs> yep. 
wasn't a machine, it was a hat. Oh. He sits on the couch thinking of ideas, wearing a hat that just says machine. That's that's just good oh, stuff. So good. So, I, I mean, I'm going to put this high because, I mean, it, Roger does drop a boat on Jeff. Oh, yeah. And, like, anything bad that happens to Jeff, I'm also on board with because, you know, he's not great in the early seasons. There's definite um, murdering. Or attempted murders, oh, yeah, anyway. For sure. And it's very funny. This episode is very funny. It really is. I let Jerry Lewis live, and I think we all agree that was a mistake. <laughs> There's just a lot of great little uh, throwaway one-liners, and they bring in a lot of the side characters from the show yes. who, to have their like little moment in the telethon that is very funny, referencing like the characters that you don't see that often. Like, so Buckle. Yeah, it's good. I love Buckle. Lying is wrong. I'd know that if only I'd paid attention to anything that ever happened to me before. Like, <laughs> it's just got a lot of, lot of good little little throwaway lines. Um, if we can still move stuff, I am comfortable putting that in like the top three for me. Yeah, I'll put it in. Because we can move it around. Yeah. I just really like the Phantom of the Telethon. I think it's great. It's not like the spookiest, but it has spooky elements. It's just probably like the funniest one that I think of. He's a joke killer. There's a beating with a tiny Casio keyboard. It's great. It's a joke killer. <laughs> we don't work blue. That's a lazy man's comedy. <laughs> so great. Oh yeah, they've got four middle schoolers writing all of the dialogue for a telethon run by the CIA, which yeah. is great. Steve and Stott and Barry and Toshi are over there. It's good stuff. And they... I like that sometimes Barry is like a perfectly competent human being, but other times he's just not. Not. Yeah even remotely. Yeah. Barry is one of my favorite, favorite characters. <laughs> I thought about adding the kind of, like, the one where you find out Barry is on medication to repress his, like, That's pretty dark. Tendencies. It's pretty dark, but I felt like it veered more into, like, psychological thriller territory. Yeah, Even though you're I think probably that overlaps right. anyway. We didn't want to have too many episodes. We already had to cut a bunch of Christmas stuff. Anyway, that brings us to our first definite horror movie reference which is alien yes in in the episode of entitled great space roaster which you may be able to guess the nature of based on the title mm. uh roger asks for a roast it does not go well no because he insists that he wants people the, them to really let him have it and then he cries and cannot understand why they would say such terrible things to him and of course yep. He's wearing, like, drug sunglasses during the whole thing so that nobody can tell that he's, like, weeping piteously. Right. For drugs, yo. <laughs> the memo <laughs> line of his check. Yes. Basically, I mean, he's a depraved piece of shit, and they point it out, and it's very funny. Yeah. But yeah, he gets his feelings hurt and decides he's going to kill them because, of course, Robert Rogers a, a sociopath. Yes, with... Are you no. really gonna? Are you really Sense gonna kill scale. six people over twenty dollars? You're saying this to the person who killed five people for nineteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so many great one-liners. <laughs> so yeah, Stan uses his CIA connections to get sent up into space, where they're like sponsored by the Chia Pet Corporation, and yes. to see if chia seeds will grow in space. It, you know. And Roger, Roger chases him around up. while blasting the sign by Ace of Base. Yes, and it. Ace of Base. Yeah, is that Ace of Base? <laughs> well, uh... permission to fart, fart denied. <laughs> There's some good fart jokes in this episode too. Also, like butthole eating scorpions. I think. I yes, they climb up in your exactly buttholes, and then called. they come out of his mouth. Yeah. Oh, I never thought I'd see you guys again. <laughs> Yep, and so he kind of plays the xenomorph. Yes. Running all through the ship, and eventually, you know, there's a moral sort of, but, like, that's not the fun part. They make up at the end, but it's the, very funny. The fun yeah. part is Roger is the xenomorph and Stan insisting on wearing tiny, tiny panties. Oh, yeah, and he calls them panties. Yeah. It's just space panties or whatever. Fresh panties. Steve, stop yeah. sneaking peeks. If you want to look at my meatballs in this thing, go ahead, I'm your dad. <laughs> so Such a fun show i love american dad i mean okay so this is like a good one but middle of the road for me like this is classic american dad it's not exceptional 
but it's not bad. I'm going to put it at eight, right in the middle. All right. I'm comfortable with that since we can move them. Yep. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm giving myself a lot of freedom because it's like hard to picture until you get it all like up on the board. Very true. All right. Hot water. Hot water was the season premiere of its season. And it was a big deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because CeeLo Green was in it. Right. But they don't credit him that way. So I was like really confused for a while. Because I was like, I know that's CeeLo Green. But that's not what it says on the guest star. Anyway, he goes by another name. So there's a lot of seeing in this episode about a psychotic hot tub that standbys and like slowly murders the whole family. Yes. Um, my favorite episode of this, or my favorite part of this episode is the hot tub shop guy. Oh, Marguerite. Um, love Marguerite. Marguerite. Yes. I love Marguerite. And that Principal Lewis and him just like hang out because Principal Lewis is a great character as well. Yeah, but... he really is. Um, the Something Marguerite. Off with this tub. The... <laughs> the... <laughs> Got a DVD play, play the princess and the frog. It's a good movie, man. <laughs> it's not a family tub. This is not a family tub. So the, it's like from the 1970s. And yes. Apparently, just it's got a stripper pole yeah. and like all and sorts of nonsense. And it's sentient. And it's it it is the it it's CeeLo Green. It sings songs. Oh, and, this is the episode with the like "Daddy's Gone" song. Yes, too, this is "Daddy's it? Gone." Yeah. 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 Shirtless Melody by Roger and Steve. Yeah. It's good stuff, you know. Because eventually I... the family leaves. Yes, they yeah. leave and they do a crazy boy band um, scene singing this song. In the Daddy's desert. Gone. <laughs> yeah. That. Good stuff. I wonder. I'm going to look right now. I meant to look before i don't know if CeeLo green wrote oh that would be interesting because when the weekend did his episode i think he wrote the songs probably also like, was very involved in the it made me laugh and it was it was stupid i mean the i mean the whole show was crazy and stupid yeah. but when when the the hot tub is trying to convince stan to stay with him and forget about his family it's the do whatever you like song and do whatever you like yeah, exactly <laughs> and stan yeah. goes well i love my family but i do like to do whatever i like but when the dot <laughs> <goes>, all. <laughs> stick a finger in my jet it's not gay <laughs> <laughs> I like at the end of the... Oh, by the way, they've been cutting back and forth to live CeeLo Green, who's yes. sort of narrating the show. But at the end of the episode, like, Stan and Francine are both dead, killed by the hot tub. And he's like, that's it, they're dead. Yep, and that was See it. See you next week, it or whatever. Over. And that was the end of the show. So that yep. was like, this was a pretty, like, shocking season opener. Pretty darn creepy. Because, yeah, both of the main characters, or two of the main characters, rather, are just dead at the end. And it's no sold. It's never mentioned again. Yep, ever. So... It, and I who think, knows what happened there? Is that the only other than Gabriel Sidibe saying things are too oh, spicy the for the pepper? Live... The only live action person? It might be. I was thinking David Boreanaz, but I remembered that that was actually for um, Family Guy. Yeah, Family Guy does a lot. I mean, they used to do that ridiculous yeah. con. But I think you're stuff. right. I think uh, CeeLo Green at oh, and supposedly Seth MacFarlane's dad in no, that was Family Guy too. Yeah, I think uh, you're right. Things are getting too spicy. Though Pepper. they do mention a lot of other celebrities. <laughs> I would be I I would be willing to put this at right now number five because it's legit. It, it's a legitimate horror episode. Like it's intended to be. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um. Yeah, I'm good with that. Five seems good. It might get bumped down, but, like, definitely higher than Great Space Roaster. And the music was honestly great. I mean, yeah, it really there was. was just a lot of good moments. And there's some funny stuff, too. So, yeah, definitely. Um, oh, oops, we went slightly out of chronological order, I guess, because we need to do the best little horror house in Langley Falls, which is in the season before this. But 
we had sorted them into like spooky episodes versus the only official Halloween episode because I there was only one. I was surprised. Right. But anyway, do we want to just leave that at the end? Now we'll do we'll do it. All right. So this is the only official Halloween episode of American Daddy, even though a lot of adult animation shows have one every year. This was the only one that actually took place on Halloween, I believe. Um, yeah. From all of my research. Yeah, because this is the one where Steve and uh, Toshi's sister go in the Steve and Toshi's and sister, because Toshi wants, to, says she has to be back by sundown. And, right. And there's that, that's the whole B story about him chasing steve around yeah and, there and was... stan has the haunted house right. that he does the year and... but gets some competition because the crazy mountain man from season two has moved into their neighborhood and used to work for disney so he has like a really good special effects horror house that you know uh, imp popping out of his mailbox in. i'll skin you alive you little whore <laughs> Want to oh, take oh, the Solara? I forgot the about that. The wheels blocking in my Solara. So, yeah. so he's married. Yeah, I guess I'll have to take the pumpkin car. Put a baby in me. For her pedicure. My favorite. My favorite one. The whole thing. Because I never imagined my life like this. I don't know how to get out. <laughs> and the owl. That owl was my best friend. <laughs> also. Here's, here's a fun thing that I did not know until I was uh, looking things up for the show. Uh, the the sister mm -hmm. was voiced by Grace Park, who was in Battlestar Galactica. She was Boomer. And Toshi's mom was voiced by Sandra O. Oh. Huh. So. Actually, yeah, I can definitely hear Sandra O oh for um, Toshi's mom. Why can't I remember Toshi's sister? I absolutely know this, but I'm totally blanking on it. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. It'll come to me. <laughs> Steve has a major crush on her, though, because she's dressed like Chun-Li from yes. the video game. Yes. And it's just like he actually says boy -yo 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 -ing out loud while she's walking down the stairs. She's like, what? Like, Nothing. <sighs> Humming a humming a humming a boner. <laughs> boner. So I think this one. After I went, it the the. Sometimes they actually do like, you know, like the little message thing, like you mentioned in the other one, and uh, mm -hmm. I think that one of the most, <laughs> one of the most honest things Stan has ever said was. You were just supposed to say mine was better, even if it wasn't. Yeah, that's marriage for you. Yeah. Because so, he gets real serial killers, and then that's the whole like central chaos of the episode. But yes. yeah, it, he doesn't end up beating Buckle at Haunted Housing. No. The serial killers just escape and kill a bunch of people. Well, Roger lets him out. Because at first they were they're all oh, right, caged right, right. up and no one's scary. afraid of him because they can't get him. And, and so Roger lets him out. And they're also just like sitting in there. Yeah. What? Oh. You're just into flesh-colored, non-fruit-shaped people. <laughs> you look like Get away a, from me, you gross pear. You, you ugly gray, gray pear. Oh, so good. Yeah. And it, Ugh, it also had... I like this episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, a lot. Mm, the, uh, I think I like it a little more than the Great Space Roaster, so I might bump that one down and put this one above it. Okay. I'm down with that. You know why? So. And, and I agree with you because um, it opens with one of my favorite things of all time when Steve is having the dream about Maria Sharapova and going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's great opener, yes. Also, it's the only reason I know what an Abba Zabba is. Oh, yeah. It's candy. Yeah, but they don't... I've, like, never seen one in real life. No. I believe they exist, but... I have never personally encountered an Abba Zabba. So, perhaps someday. Who can say? There's a lot of crap candy out there. There really is. Yeah, it's like true. A lot. Like way Not more as much than as there think. are, like, bad original television shows, though. So, <laughs> there's Fair. just not enough room at gas stations. But, you know. Anyway. 
I had a point yesterday. I'm going to do a little aside because it's just us. Oh, but... yes, please do. So yesterday, I, the, last night I did the Hannibal thing. And mm -hmm. I had to Oh, yeah, it. go watch that on Disputed Pod. Yes, DisputedPod.com. Because that was cool and fun. They, they, they are great, and they have super good production values, which now, since this is the week of, of reassessment, now I want to have cool equipment like they do so that we can do sounds and shit like that. So, anyways, when I was writing it, I was thinking about the fact that, and this is an aside, doesn't have anything to do with American Dad, they... Thomas Harris wrote... Silence of the Lambs, he wrote Red Dragon, he wrote Hannibal. Now, mm -hmm. they're, they're descending in quality, I think. Hannibal was not a great story. I mean, it was kind of, it was more fun in the book than, than they did it in the movie. Even though the movie was fun because Ray Liotta's brain. But, he wrote Hannibal Rising, the book, uh -huh. be, specifically because he knew that if he didn't, the movie studio would invent Hannibal's origin f without him. Yeah. And he which couldn't... Which he probably couldn't stand the right, thought he of. Right, he couldn't. And that's why he wrote it. Yeah. And that's how art becomes content. Like, that's the... Like, when... The, the term content enrages me most of the time because nobody goes, hey, you know what? You really have to go to the Louvre. They have the best content. Like, nobody would ever <laughs> say that. But they right. use it to describe so many other things mm -hmm. that until it had to fit into a fucking div tag, it never would have been called content. You know what sure. I mean? It, it has another name. So anyway, I, I guess that that's my little side rant about it because I don't like the term and I realize... But not that I'm saying that, that um, you know, I would say Science of the Lambs as a movie is art. Um, it, the, the more I looked into the the things that the, the Demi, the director, did in it, the more fascinated I became. Like, he... Whenever, whenever, whenever anyone was talking to Stalin, he mm -hmm. always filmed them talking directly into the camera because he wanted everybody to understand how Starling was the only woman surrounded by all these men and they're yeah. all, you know what I mean? So I, I, I think it's was, a great movie. Yeah. I love silence of the lambs. Yeah, it's it really quite lovely in a lot of ways, even though it's about something like viscerally horrible and horrifying, but yeah, it's a great film and it's absolutely a horror movie. Oh, that's so. for sure. All right. So that was my, that was my little aside, which brings us to poltergasm. Poltergasm. So. I love this episode, I have to say. It's pretty high ranking for me. Yeah? It's riffing on Poltergeist, yes. obviously, which is great. Um, really is. You know, they've got the, like, Roger playing the little medium lady of yes. one of his um, personas. It's always a great episode when there's a persona. I forget what he called himself. Um shit but i do remember the like what are you doing ruby doing her name was sign. ruby but i don't remember ruby my what? finger child copyright sign yes poltergasm <laughs> he said yes. he he keeps saying that he's trademarked poltergasm and then he comes back later and he says this is a sexorcism i'm i'm copywriting that because it turns out somebody had already <laughs> used and i am in hot water and i'm in hot water <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, it's a Ruby, Ruby Zeldestein, I think, is because it's Something like that, Zelda yeah. Rubenstein is the actual actress who played the medium in there you go. Culture Guys. So, yeah, it's Ruby Zeldestein. Um, the story is that Francine has been faking orgasms, and so her sexual desire becomes a vengeful spirit in the house. Yes, that um, is correct. And one of the things that throttles this episode to the top for me was the um, teenage daughter teaching her father how to be good at sex montage. Oh. With the 1980s song and yes. the finger lifting weights and the balloons yeah. and everything. It was just, that was, that was really, that. Yeah, all that was hilarious. good. 
Also, the Italian lover guy getting spit out at the end of the episode. Oh, Maurizio gets like, I'm free. spit out of the house and Nintendo. breaks his neck. <laughs> just oh, yeah, gets yeah, fucking yeah. murked. That was oh. good stuff, too. Yeah. So. Uh, wasn't the portal in Steve's butt, too? Like, yes. Yep. Yeah, from the closet into Steve's ass. Yeah. It's great. Um, so. so I guess, I mean, this one was, I mean, it is really funny. I'm trying to think of what, if there were any big lines out of it because honestly it's sometimes I'm not gonna remember I'm gonna think a line is in this episode when it's in that episode because the line has nothing to do with the episode but I know that at one point Roger says something about it's making his girdle all gooey and then he goes I think I'm wearing it wrong Uh, yeah I think I'm wearing it wrong that was from this episode which is a good one Uh. oh and that's when Stan, when she comes in, when Roger comes in and Stan goes, are we really going to do this? And Steve goes, well, do you have a medium character? Right. I like when they reference the fact, like, when they go, it's got to yeah. be you. Really when gonna I get there, do, are we really going to do this? Do <laughs> yeah. you have a medium character? Like, that happens a lot with Roger's, like, uh, little personas, and it's great. Uh, I'm going to get there, and it's going to be you, isn't it? <laughs> Now that's really trademarked because I found out that somebody else already had Poltergasm trademarked and now I'm in hot water. (laughs) Funny some. We are benefits. He means we're friends with benefits. But we're not friends. (laughs) There's no Jeff, which is also always a plus. See? Oh, and... This whole episode, Klaus is at the hotel or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's true. And I've seen that guy before. Yeah, he goes and and he's stuck there watching the the channel about the hotel. Yeah. Watching ads. Yeah. Yeah. But I've seen that gag somewhere else and I can't remember where. Yeah, I don't know what that's a reference to. No, wait a minute. You know what? McFarland ripped off himself because the. They do the basically the same gag with Cleveland and Quagmire chained in the basement watching oh, the yeah, direct watching TV Oh, yeah, watching the direct setup. TV thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, come on, Seth. So, well, is this a top three for you? Mm, it might be. I mean, maybe put it at number four. Do we have a number four yet? No, we'll put it at four. Yeah. All right. Which brings us to the 200. Yes. So I love these episodes, these post-apocalyptic episodes, um, which we get into a lot more when you include the Christmas episodes. But this takes place in like the future Christmas universe, but isn't a Christmas episode. Right. So we got to keep it. Also, I believe this episode opens with uh, Tennessee Ernie Ford singing uh, Shenandoah, which is, like, unironically one of my top ten favorite songs. Really? So the ten- Yeah, I love Tennessee Ernie Ford's voice. I love that song that he sings. I think it's great. I have it actually on, like, a record, like a big record, and I listen to it a lot. So, um, but yeah, it, it's like... What did he, he didn't say I love you to the family before the world ended. He said, like, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Yeah, something like that. Smell you later or something stupid, yeah. Yeah, something (laughs) stupid. And comes back to find that there's been, like, a nuclear event that has caused everybody to either, like, mutate or become flesh-eating cannibals, basically. And he can't find the family, so... Oh, and they hang out with Greg a lot during this episode. Yeah, there's a lot of Greg. He carries him around Greg doesn't have any feet. Oh, yeah, because Principal Lewis ate his legs. Yeah. And Roger is, of course, the 200, but he thinks he's faked it at first, but then you find out that he, like, got into a Hadron Collider and became all of his personas. It's great. There's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff Um, in this one. But do I think it cracks the top eight? Hmm. Mm. I don't know. There's not a lot of great zingy one-liners in this episode. No, but Lewis so like, goes, like did I get you? Is... You gotta say something if I got you. Them's apocalypse rules. <laughs> That's the apocalypse rules. Oh, and like when Stan takes off his cape, he's like, ooh, sexy. <laughs> but yeah, not enough Principal Lewis time. 
They do have, like, the flashbacks to every, like, little last moment that Stan remembers with the family that are kind of funny, like, with Francine and the freaking uh, garbage, where she's doing, like, the 1980s movie run to get the garbage to the curb. Right. Hmm. I don't know, I don't know. It's tough. Do I like this one better than the Great Space Roaster? I certainly don't. Okay, let's put it at number 10, then. You know. It is kind of like a zombie movie. So, you know, that's obviously why it's here. Kind of like a zombie movie. You know what's going to happen? Now that I now that I look hmm. at where we're at and... One, we're going to have to move a lot of stuff? Five, six, seven. No, I realize that um, we're probably... This is going to... This is going to be a rare for us two-part episode. Oh, you think? Because we are 40 minutes in and... Oh. We have we a lot to say about it. Kind of halfway we'll through, and as they get higher up, we're going to have more to say about them, I think. This is probably true. You know what I mean? I so maybe we'll, uh... maybe we'll we'll go till we get, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight left. Let's try to get to six. Hmm. Yeah, okay. So All do right. two more? Yeah. Two more for the evening? Yeah. Okay. So we'll do the Witches of Langley. Yes. Right. So this one is not up there for me, but there are a couple good moments. But it's definitely got like a couple really solid horror references in that like the Needful Thing shop is where Steve gets the spell book. Right. That sets all of this into motion. I forget what Roger calls himself as the shopkeeper, though. It's something really, really stupid. Um... And I like that he keeps trying to get rid of the, like, pyrite dragon, but he can't. <laughs> the heavy, the, like, really heavy dragon. <laughs> and all of the... It's, his name is Twanderlust Lumpkin. Yes, and he has a crush on the sandwich guy. Yeah. He keeps, like, lying to the sandwich guy for some reason, or, like, trying to get with the, like, sandwich guy across the street in oh. his shop. So that's always funny. And, like, um, Steve and his friends all transform into, like, 80s glam rock looking witches doing things you know yes because it's the craft basically yeah basically it's the craft but in langley falls at uh pearl bailey junior high i like the um spells that rhyme you know that's always fun. that's true put air in my scrote and help this witch to float 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 <laughs> above the, the concert oh and uh Stan and Klaus start a podcast during this episode, which, of course, is also funny, about 90s songs. Yes. <laughs> or 90s bands that people don't remember, but they do. You know? That everybody remembers. Right, exactly. Oh. Uh, so. Hmm. There was a good Barry line in it, too. The airline thing. Oh? The, to return, when he says, I don't know, to bring back things that have been lost, and Barry goes, the respect people used to have for air travel. We used to wear oh, suits, yeah. goddammit. So true. Oh. I used to, uh, we had family friends whose dad worked for the airline, and sometimes we'd get to fly standby, and whatever you wore, they like told you to wear nice clothes because you were representing American Airlines, I guess. And they wanted yeah. the standby passengers to be you know, dressed nicely, which is silly, but I mean, it used to be, still. It, it was definitely a thing. Yeah. And, hmm. And, and like I said, this one's pretty low for me. I'm comfortable putting it at, at like 13 or 14. Yeah, that's fine. Now, there was one there There was one thing and I don't know. Are you much of a, a basketball fan? An I NBA know, fan? Like, some basketball references, but no, I don't really watch basketball. So, uh, there was a, and I, and I was looking up things from it, and Snot says, Magic's not real. If it was, the Orlando Magic would have won a championship by now. And Steve goes, Snot, you follow basketball? And Snot goes, I watch the finals, which is such a, <laughs> like a, a true thing. Like, even, it, yeah. I can't get um, Red Sox games down here. Because I'm not, I don't know mm -hmm. what fucking, like, giant amount of money I would have right. to pay to get the station that carries them. But I followed them, 
and they were in the playoffs and it was a big deal and everything like that. So I got to watch them when they were in the playoffs, but it was such a, I felt like such a loser. Like it's the, it's the sports equivalent of going to church on Christmas and Easter. You know what I mean? Like if they were in the playoffs, I'll watch, but then I won't, you know. Lapsed baseball fan yeah. as to lapsed Catholic yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. But I'm not going to fucking like get no, the, absolutely the, not. Dr- the the XM radio radio broadcast so I can sit like some old timey idiot fixing a car late at night before I get murdered listening to the old ball game. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Like, Good bless. Oh, that, but be kudos to people who love basketball that much and stick to it, you know. Anybody with the exception of the NFL, which, I mean, it, the, the thing that fascinates me, and it will, it, I, I think it will always fascinate me, people talk about Twitter as this giant force for, you know, change and everything like that. And every Sunday, all that's trending is individual players and teams from the NFL. It's like, it, it, it doesn't, you could, you could, I don't know, overthrow a country. And if it's on Sunday, you would never know from looking on Twitter trending because it's always going to be somebody who missed a field goal or some shit. Yeah, I also feel like my Twitter trending is not very informative. For instance, today I learned that a couple in California took their engagement photos at a grocery store, which was charming and adorable, but really didn't have anything to do with either my interests or world news or anything like that. But it was on my like sidebar. So that's what I learned today. That's weird. Yeah, it was weird. It was cute, though. The couple was cute. The photo shoot was cute. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But yeah, I, I think I think 14 is a good spot for that one. Right. So then we'll... I think what we're learning is when it's like Steve Snot and Barry and Toshi, that it's not going to be very high up. Yeah. It can't... But... Well, I mean, there are the, I think the best thing. Steve by himself is great, but with the ensemble, it never, yeah. The. You know what? I, I I do want to go back though, because was it best little whorehouse? Yeah, because Snot was just in his gym clothes, and he's like, yeah, oh, my yeah. mom spent my costume money on dental dams. Dental I don't dams. care. I don't know. She, she, she's already got it. I don't care. If she spreads. I don't it care if it. those other guys get it. <laughs> Fucking dental dams. Oh, uh, so how many dams? Dams, it's college money. Oh yeah, because Snot's very poor. That's the joke. Yes, yeah. and uh, his mother is very promiscuous, which is the other joke. So, yeah. right, exactly. I would say the the episode that the kids carried was the boys' sleepover. When <laughs> oh, when you get these boys together, there's not going to be a lot of sleeping going on. But Ugh. the fact that hardcore BF weekend. The, <laughs> The the thing that that will always fascinate me about that episode is that they were all just blatantly in the treehouse trying to suck their own dicks. And yep. it was never mentioned, and it just looked like they were kind of fooled. And then they, at the end, they're like, hey, look, Robbie's doing it. <laughs> Rodney. Yep, and then they watched. That's the... Amazing that we have such a sophisticated hierarchy at such a young age. I'm at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, that's what you think about girls. You're supposed to be thinking about blocks, making pee pee on the potty. <laughs> that's all I think about blocks uh, and making pee pee on the potty. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now we're gonna. All right, I guess, I guess our last episode for tonight. Steam right into the talented Mr. Dingleberry, who, which, which is. I kind of forgot about this episode. It's so he he Roger is trying to help Steve in the talent show, and he says, "I will be your um, ventriloquist dummy." And the glue that he uses to make his face makes him very very aggressive, crazy, and crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, and. Don't say dummy because it's like a puppet slur and yes. yeah, Roger pretends to be the ventriloquist dummy for the school talent show. Um, there's a couple funny lines in this one episode. I also appreciate Steve's trip to the like old people insane asylum where he meets the guy who used to be Roger's puppeteer. That was kind of funny. Did you um, ever see the movie that it was based on magic? 
No, I didn't. I wondered if this was based on something, though. Okay. So, is it a horror movie that it's based on? It's. You get ready for this. In 1978, a horror film was made mm-hmm. about a fucking ventriloquist puppet, a swearing mm-hmm. puppet, and it goes it goes bad. But it stars Anne Margaret and Anthony Hopkins. All right. Interesting. And also Burgess Meredith, who I still can't figure out. I, I know that he I know three things that Burgess Meredith was in. He was in that famous episode of The Twilight Zone. Okay. Well no four. Wait, which one? The the one where he's all alone now and he can finally read all the books he wants and then he Yes, yes, his yes, glasses. yes. But that was time now. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, but not for nothing, he had time to walk all around and try to find another pair of glasses. So I don't know what he was. Right. About. Right. So there's that. He was the penguin in the Batman show. Ah. Uh, he was okay. Mickey and Rocky and all the Rockies until he died. Mm-hmm. And he was in a ridiculous movie called The Last Chase. Never heard of it. You wouldn't have. It's a 70s movie about, and it had Lee Majors, the $6 million man, as the star, and Mm -hmm. Chris Makepeace, who was like a a big deal kid actor in the 70s, and then I don't know what happened, he he just was never never in anything ever again, but he was in like Meatballs with Bill Murray, he had a very famous movie called My Bodyguard, it was a, you know, it was a really good movie, but anyway, it was about Lee Majors in a race car, because there was no more gas in the whole world. And Lee Majors was fucking everything up because he had a race car that he was driving around, but nobody could catch him because nobody had a car except Burgess Meredith had a plane, like a like a fighter jet. So all right, yeah, there you go. So it, anyway, it, I think you know what I think. If you're down, I think that we should make a a, a blood pact to both see the movie Magic before we do the second half of the American Dad Spooky episodes so that if we okay. finish up too quick, we can talk about magic. Pending the, like, possibly ludicrous cost of watching it, like, if it's nineteen ninety nine on Prime, I'm not going to do it. But if I can find it somewhere for, like, less than 10 bucks, then yes. I'll, I'll get you. Don't worry. <laughs> A Katie's going to get it illegally. Just kidding. We would never do that. Arr. But yeah, I'm sure it won't be that ludicrous. Ah. Um, so, so this one is like, okay to me. Yeah. I do appreciate the creepy elements. There was like, I think my favorite part is where they're like, they have the Morse code kid or whatever in the audience. And Steve is trying to communicate. He's like, I've always loved you, Steve, or whatever. And it's like, that's not what he was trying to say at all. Oh. Um, I... So that was, that was like a little funny bit, but. It made me laugh, and it was a, it was just, it was a throwaway joke again. But when when uh, Steve says like, "What am I gonna do now that I can't sing or whatever?" and he goes, "You gotta use the age old art of ventrilo," and he can't say ventriloquism, so he just goes puppet talking. One word. Oh yeah, ventriloquy, <laughs> ventriloquism, puppet talking. One word. And then he says something about I think being kicked off of Hollywood Squares for saying queef, which is just. Like a funny little throwaway too. I, it wasn't Hollywood Squares. What was the other match game thing that was like a match game? Yes, yeah, so it was kicked off a match game for saying tweet or saying queef on air. But that's neither here nor there. You or could something like that. I wish that they would make match game now and have like legitimately people that are funny but are not too famous to be on Match Why game. haven't they like tried the tactic of remaking old game shows I, like I, they remake old understand. movies? Because like game shows are always fresh because it's like dependent on the individual that comes on the show. And like a lot of old game shows were fun to watch. So Match Game was brilliant. Yeah, there's a tactic. Match Game was just straight up brilliant that just the premise behind it. And it let the people, it let the, the, the stars be funny. Like, that's, I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy to me. I also think that the British game show Countdown should come over here because I am good at spelling and I would like to be on it. Also, I just thought of the other, like, funny moment from the episode is that they put a sticky note on the, the makeup that says, like, 
don't use again, and it just falls off <laughs> again. And there's a bunch of other ones like, under there. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just going to be a problem again. So it's a Roger-heavy episode, so, like, I like it, but I think maybe, like, putting it at 13 is probably fine with me. I'm done. I'm down. Yeah. 13 it is. So now... So I have kind of an idea of what I think number one for me is going to be. I'll be excited to find out if it's the same for you. I think it will be because we've talked about the episode a couple times, but it'll be interesting to see in our sequel live what ends up being the the best spooky episode. So, This is super exciting. This, you know, I have a lot of passion for American Dad, which is a very useful thing to have well, so, passion and knowledge about. Exactly. Just kidding, it's not. So, but but you know. we maybe. But this is fun. Yes, and maybe since this is the, since this is going to be, um, the the second helping, as it were, um, mm-hmm. I'll be able to do the stuff that I was hoping that I would be able to do. Like, put clips. A couple more bells and whistles like next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, what yeah. we got going on here is pretty fancy. I mean, it's got a logo there and everything. That font's, yeah. that font's pretty scary. Um, it also kind of feels like it matches the American Dad logo font. So, I like that. That's yeah. good stuff. Well, folks. Oh, well, before we leave, should I hold Hubie up in front of the camera? Of I kind of. Course. It's, it's okay, let me go. sort of Hubie. ridiculous that you haven't been doing that the entire time. He, like, went to sleep. Let me go figure out where he is. Hubie. Come here, baby. He's gotten so big. I don't know if everybody, like, really grasped how tiny he was when he was a puppy, but now he's... He's a big man. Look at that big Big boy. He is a big fellow. Oh, Hubie. Woke him up from, like, a dead sleep, the poor thing. Hubie, can you speak? Like, no, mother, what are you talking about? (laughs) Tired. But, yes, this is his bedtime, so he is quite, you know, droopy, droopy boy. But here he is, the Hubster, as promised. What a boy. What a marvelous (laughs) boy. boy. He can't see anything right now, because he needs to be groomed. Oh. Well, then, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, he gets less cute when you groom him, so, you know, I'm always hesitant to I can see that. bring him and let him be shaved. I can see that. Yeah, you know, he kind of gets a little raggedy looking when he gets groomed, but I try to brush him every day. Right. But anyway, yeah, there but he is. Yeah, his hair is so curly. Don't you have to use, like, I know. a special brush? I do have, like, a special brush. It's, like, V-shaped and special somehow i don't know but anyway i just thought that'd be a good way to cap off the episode it's not a cliffhanger of in in the traditional sense but i'm excited that we'll be back to do more because this was fun and by the way Mm. magic is um we can get a free seven day shout factory trial what the hell is shout factory no idea but it's shout with an exclamation point factory all right well, now I'm curious, like, what TV network that's affiliated with, or what? I mean... It's not on our good pal Tubi? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I only looked at Prime because I had it near, like... Oh, gotcha. Near my hand. The, uh, uh, yeah. You know what? I am going to say, because we have a minute left, it, this doesn't have anything to do with even anything that, that we're doing. I just... Uh, Mrs. Ha! And I. It's free on Tubi. Nice. Tubi, we love you. You're the best. We, we really You're do like love you, Tubi. my favorite thing. Yeah. The. Uh, anyway, there please is. Continue. So you, you know, Halloween Kills came out, and and I'm sure that you didn't watch it. Um, I did not. No, but I have uh, okay. seen a lot of stuff related to Halloween lately, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have you ever seen that the movies that made us series on Netflix? I don't think so. I saw the toys that made us. So, well, yes, it's the it's the exact same thing except right. it's for yeah. for movies. But they're all they're all Gen X. Like you wouldn't know most of the movies at least from when they came out. But they told some they sure. they're doing they're doing uh, they 
horror movies are the, this in this new season. They did Halloween, and I and I learned some interesting things. But huh. there is a YouTube channel, and it's the randomest channel. The guy usually plays video games and talks about wrestling. It's called Six One Six Entertainment. But if you care about the Halloween franchise universe, whatever it is, this guy made detailed interesting complete compelling super entertaining he did the history of halloween he huh. and he he broke it into the fact that first he did halloween one and two which were the real ones then he did halloween three and it got its own episode because it's so fucking bananas that and it had nothing to do with with the other ones. Which, by the way, is that the one that people hate? Yes, by the way? they hated it because okay. it didn't have Michael Myers in it, and because since they right. had done two Halloweens with Michael Myers, the idea of making it John Carpenter's Halloween, where it would be a different movie every year, they were like, "Well, let's try it," and then it didn't work. Oh, so that's okay. what happened, and. The premise of it was these kids had these masks and the mm-hmm. the guy that ran the mask company was trying to like bring back some druid and had a chunk of Stonehenge and the the masks if you wore them when he was casting the spell your head turned into bugs and I think it should be remade and instead of it being a commercial it would be a TikTok dance and if you do the dance to whatever sound the mask company does, then your head turns into bugs. It's a it's a million dollar idea. I'm telling you right now. Anyway, All then right. he did then he did the Thorn trilogy, which is four, five, and six, the Daniel Harris ish ones. Then mm-hmm. he did um, Rob Zombies, and he's leaving the, the and he did H two O, and then the one with Buster Rhymes Resurrection or whatever like that. But the fact is, is that he addresses. Wow, there have been a lot. They and there are at least four different timelines, to the point where huh. the 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 Blumhouse one that just came out, the the 2018 one, the 40th anniversary of of Halloween, when he did, uh, um, and this was the second of that trilogy, wipes out everything except the original one. It even wipes out huh. Halloween two. Halloween two never happened. It's just like how? that retconned. They just they retconned it at least oh. three times in the okay. in the course of the thing. That's why I mean Halloween never made as much money as Friday the Thirteenth because in Friday the Thirteenth it didn't matter. It was just Jason. Put him in space. Who cares? He's a kid in one movie. In the next movie, he's a big giant grown man. Who gives a shit? Yeah, I never understood that actually. It, it so doesn't. you know, made no made no matter. sense. Made no okay. difference. But anyway, six one six Entertainment. The guy worked really hard on it, and it's real. If you like. Michael Myers and you're interested in the franchise and some behind the scenes shit to the point where in Halloween 5 the director was told to put shit in and he's like well whoever makes Halloween 6 will have to figure out what the, who this person is and literally That's a just problem for future me yeah, that yeah. and it was he knew it wasn't going to be him anyway yeah um thank you all thank you for indulging me on my little sidetrack there but it was it was really interesting um, I like uh, the having the... nothing to do with horror at all. A movie that made me was The Last Unicorn with a soundtrack by America. Aww. So, yes, Aww. everybody should watch that. Have you ever listened to the crushingly sad song "The Unicorn" by the Irish Rovers? No. Is it about the last unicorn? Because I can't like. It is about. I can't cope with those emotions because of the book and because of the movie. Where it's like, you know, in the I, song, I'm... Mm-hmm. they tell the story of Noah building the ark, and the unicorns were having so much fun and playing that oh, they wait, didn't I do pay know attention. This song. Yes, they didn't pay any attention. Yes, and, and that's why and you'll they got never left see... behind. Yes, and he says, and that's why that's you'll so never funny. see a unicorn to this very day. Yeah, yeah. it's actually a somewhat cheerful tune. That yes. the song is sung to, but the subject matter, like uh, the unicorn say, yeah, 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 yeah. I actually know exactly what you're talking about. I heard that as a little kid. Yeah. Oy. But yeah, man, the last unicorn made me feel things as a child. 
because she was both a human and a unicorn, and now she didn't belong either place. And it was just like a lot. It's a good movie, though. And America did a great soundtrack. My ringtone used to be a horse with no name, America? The band America? The band America did the soundtrack for The Last Unicorn animated movie, yes. No shit. They wrote all the songs. Yeah, it's great. That's fucking wild. I know. It's wonderful. It's fabulous. It's huh. cheesy as hell, but yeah, it's great. And um, I want to say Mia Farrow was the voice of the unicorn. Interesting. Um, in the movie. Yeah, it's good stuff. Apparently the guy who wrote the book hated the movie, but I liked both his book and the movie, so everything's fine, obviously. Well, there you go. Anyway, I'm glad we could end on a not-at-all horror note, but I've enjoyed talking about and ranking the spooky episodes of American yes. Dad. Yes! I'm sorry so. to derail us, uh... But oh no that's fine i love derailings it's great the, um, um, when I we eventually am... talk about the christmas episodes there's a derailing literally very <laughs> true yeah very true and an epic of gilgamesh reference i'm glad we're like letting ourselves do whatever we want yes so um, yeah. but remember this is, this is the week of the great assessment so who knows what else is going to happen who knows true folks true. yep well, if we, I, I'm sure we'll do the second part before Halloween, but just in case, everybody have a safe and happy Halloween. That's Thank right. you so much for watching and listening. Bye-bye.